Hello guys, what is up? Pups here from Pup Shop. And today I'm just going to be giving some general tips in Halo 5. Um, Trying to help you guys out with the basics and go through a couple like specific in-game things and some general tips on how to improve your game and um, kind of get into the competitive scene of Halo and you know what you can do to start out and how to get better and um, build yourself from there. So yeah, I have um, two dummies with me. Um, shout out to Nick Meister and Silence Assassin, two guys from the South African Halo community have come to help me out for when I want to show you guys how to use weapons and stuff. And the main reason I'm doing this video is to help out some locals that have been asking me a lot, you know, can you give me some tips, um, how do I get better, it's a lot of the same questions and um, there's, there's a lot of people that I'd need to help out so I, I thought I'd rather just put it into a video for everyone to um, learn like what basics I have to teach. Okay, so firstly I'm just going to talk through like what I believe is the best way to start out and like how to get better and how to get into the competitive vibe of Halo. So firstly, in my opinion, I think that um, I think that it's best to start off with free fall. Um, for me, free fall is the best way to like get used to the game, get used to the movements and the weapons and shooting and stuff. And it really, really, really improves your shot. Um, I mean, all the young, all the best players that have come through for Halo have always started with free fall and been really good free fall players. And then from there, they've developed into four v four. But it always starts with that free fall individual skill. So in my opinion, that's the best way to start. That's definitely the most important thing um, to get used to a game. And then uh, secondly, before you do just hop into even free fall or you know competitive game types, make sure that you like go to custom games by yourself or maybe with a couple of friends and look around the, fr the competitive maps, look for some jumps, uh, look for some spots around the map and just get uh, used to the general feel of the map. And then secondly, if you want to find like cool jumps on maps like just search on YouTube you know Halo 5 jumps or Halo 5 jumps on Fathom or Coliseum or whatever map you want to look for and they'll probably be there um, and then another thing is also to watch YouTube videos of you know like pro game of like the pro Halo players look at what tips they have to give they'll have some cool content for you know some of them do um, some tips in their content or anything that can help you guys out it, it really does help to watch you know pro gamers and people that are the best at it um, you can learn a lot from that. And then same goes for watching streams. Um, the best place to do that is on twitch.tv and you can watch, um, you know, the pro stream Halo 5, learn from them. It really is helpful to watch them. Um, okay, but let's get started with this game. I'm going to show you guys some in-game tips, uh, some control settings, and then how to use all the weapons, um, and then just some tips with that in general, and just general, like, Halo 5 tips, your movement, um, some fundamentals that you really need to know. I'm going to go through all of those. Um, the power-ups, the grenades, everything, just to give you guys like a nice basic understanding of everything. Um, yeah, and then, like I said, gonna use these two guys in my game with me as some dummies to use the weapons on to show you guys like how much damage it, each weapon does and like how to use them to be most effective with your damage and how to kill them quickly, etc. So yeah, and there's a couple controls that I need to explain and um, like uh, give you guys some advice of what which ones to have on and off because I'll explain later why. Um, so firstly, your buttons, it re this is really preference, uh, in my opinion I prefer Bump and Jumper the most, because th this, is, this is probably what most players prefer, and the reason you use Bump and Jumper is because you can jump and shoot at the same time, if you use uh, LB, so that's really nice, um, but it really does come down to preference, you can look through them, try different ones, see which ones you prefer, uh, for thumbsticks, I think pretty much everyone plays on default, um, there's a couple people that like to play on like a South Pole or something, but uh, again, preference, but try them out. Uh, for look sensitivity, I definitely recommend recommend that when you start out, uh, I mean, pretty much all the time, uh, you want to have your sensitivity quite low. Uh, so anywhere between 2 and 3 and 4 and maybe 5, you know, if you're feeling pretty warm. Uh, but I, I always keep mine at 3. I think 3 is a pretty good um, balance between you know, slow to like control your aim and like it's still relatively quick. <coughs> and then to help that, um, I put my acceleration on three, uh, I mean, sorry, four, and I think three is the default. So I want mine a little bit faster than that. And then if you really want to get technical, uh, if you go down all the way here, uh, you kind of inner and outer dead zones. Basically, <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain, but like in a dead zone, I think is where like when you move your analog, like when you move your, your right analog, your aiming one, uh, at a certain, at a certain like percentage of how much you move it, 
it'll go like faster or slower. I, it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, again, you can play around with it and see what you like, but generally people like to keep it on zero and zero percent just because then it's always constant. Um, and I, I, I think that's how the old Halos were, so I like that. Um, and I think it's the most easy way to aim and it, it keeps your aim consistent. But I if, if you play around with them, you might find that you have a really nice preference on one of them. Uh, so see which one you like. Um, and then also, you can also adjust your... Uh, wait, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh yeah, if you go into sensitivity, uh, if you like click on A on it, and then you, you can, you can uh, adjust the, the vertical the sensitivity and the horizontal. For me, again, I think this is just going too far. Uh, I, I prefer to keep mine on default. 1.5 and 3, or I guess if you it, it, it changes however much um, sensitivity you're on, you see, uh, it changes. So I, I just keep mine whenever 3 is. I like it that way. Some people like to change it up, but again, it's just a preference thing, so try that out. But um, moving on to some things that I think are essential. Um, toggle cart you want to have off. I'll explain um, a bit later why that is. Um, sense protection, a little bit uh, of a preference thing, but I keep mine off. Assassinations you definitely want to have off. Any melee in someone's back in this game is an instant kill. Um, whereas if you melee them from the front, it'll only make them one shot. Uh, so yeah, keep that off. Uh, maintain sprint you also want off and I'll explain uh, why later. Auto stabilize you want on. Again, I'll explain later. Uh, hold the clamber off. And vibration is a preference thing. I prefer it off. I just feel like when I'm in a gunfight, I don't want my controller shaking around. So uh, yeah, I keep that off. Um, Okay, so let's move on to the next step now. I play against people and with people that are better than you. Like, for me, I every person I know that got into competitive Halo always said that they, they, they like played with a lot of um, people that were better than them or they found one person, like one of their friends that was really good and they were like, oh, you know, I want to be better than you. Let's like play some custom games, let's play together. And, and like that's usually what gets people into um, getting better. Like, you know, they try really hard to be better than their friend. Um, so that that's a really, a really important thing. Um, playing people that are better than you, you'll just pick up good habits and you'll pick up a lot of things from them. Um, and then communication when you're with the team is also like really vital um, and it's something that needs to be w practiced and worked on. Um, you know, when you get your team, make sure that you all have the call lights, like you're on the same page with the call lights, make sure you have call lights for everywhere on the map um, to, you know, just better your communication. Um, and then just just be positive when you do communicate to your team. Say positive things, um, small talk well, and and it's it's more like, you know, a lot of time I see amateur players they kind of just like spam call outs, you know, like one shot, one shot, one shot there, uh, you know, like just spamming stuff that isn't super helpful and that your teammates don't really process. You want to focus more on like small talk or saying you like you know I'm pushing over here, come with me, I need help, I can help you, stuff like that. Um, and then always like always be like uh, positive towards your teammates, you know. Uh, don't put them down in game. Say like, nice job, nice job. You know, keep it up. Um, just be that positive person. You know, don't be all negative and bring the team down because that will guarantee just make uh, yourself and the team play worse. Um, okay, so moving on to some in-game basics and fundamentals. One thing to learn is the thrust slide, is what people call it. And basically, this is the quickest way to like move around the map. But once you start sprinting, you want to thrust uh, and then slide and then jump like Nico just did over there. Uh, let me do it to you. Let me do it for you like this. Thrust, slide, jump, um, and that is exactly why you want to have um, toggle crouch off, um, because it, otherwise you won't be able to like you won't be able to slide after you thrust. So that's why you want to have it off. A and I think maintain sprint helps with that. So that, that explains why I told you those controller settings are good. Um, so th that is the quickest way to move around the game. Um, thrust, slide, jump, move around the map really quickly, um, and then second thing that you guys really need to know is called the stabilize jump. Um, how you do this is basically, okay, well, th this is why I told you to have stabilize on. Stabilize is basically when you jump and aim, your your character, your uh, Spartan will like kind of float in the air like this. Um, and then you can also use it to jump, uh, so that's why it's helpful. Um, and you do it like so. You basically, you basically want to run, jump, and then stabilize um, to grab onto uh, like a little bit of higher jumps. Like normally, you wouldn't be able to make this jump if you just try to jump up and clamber. Like you won't make it. Um, but what you want to do for the stabilized jump is jump, stabilize, and then you also got to crouch at the same time. So it's definitely gonna take some practice. Whenever you try practice jumps in Halo, they don't come first time. Like you have to practice them. Um, 
So give it some time, don't get frustrated if it doesn't work at first, like you'll get the hang of it. But yeah, you want to run, jump, stabilize, and clamber like so. Um, you can also combine them with the sprints. Uh, I think that does usually make it easier. Run, jump, stabilize, there you go, and clamber. Um, and make sure that you're crouching at the same time. And like I said with the the um, slide jump, combine it um, with the stabilized jump. So if you're sprinting, you can uh, thrust, crouch, and then jump, and then stabilize and make the jump. That's like a really nice quick way to make uh, those jumps. Um, so that's a good tip. Um, also, a basic that you need to know is that when you're crouching, like when, when you press crouch, uh, you won't show up in the radar. So as you, if you look at the bottom left of my radar now, uh, you won't see my dots on the radar, that's because I'm crouching, but if I start moving normally, there you go, you'll see my dots. Um, and there you go, as you can see, Assassin demonstrating it. Uh, if you crouch, you won't show up on the radar. So that's really helpful if you want to be sneaky. Um, very fun, like fundamental good thing that you need to know. Um, so I think that's about it for the like general fundamental moving on the map tips. Um, so let's move on to the, the weapon specifics. Um, so I in any in in competitive Halo and with uh, like pretty much all the game types and playlists, um, you you always start with pistol and air. Um, so let's go through like the basics and how to use those. Um, the pistol, the five shot kill. Uh, so if my dummies can help me out here, they can come to top middle so I can show you guys. Um, pistol is a five shot kill. How it works is um, you can shoot you can shoot the the enemy anywhere. Um, so you can shoot them in the head or in the body, one, two, three, four, and any way you shoot it will make them one shot, and then the fifth shot will kill them, like that. Um, so that's how the pistol works, so generally what you want to do is shoot them like in the body four times, one, two, three, four, and then like, like you know, kind of the, the upper chest, this large part over here, it gives you like a lot to aim at, you know, it, whereas some people they try to aim for their head the whole time, and that's obviously harder to shoot, but if you aim for their body, um, that gives you a much wider area to shoot and then finish them off with a headshot. You always want to finish them off with a headshot. Um, and then also a good thing to know is if you do shoot them four times, um, it'll take another three bullets in the body to kill them. So one, two, three. So that's obviously three, you know, that's three times more than shooting them in the head. So that's why you always want to do one, two, three, four in the body and then finish them off with a headshot. Um, so that's the basics of the pistol. It, it's a really, really good weapon. I mean, it's, it's something that you need to practice with. Um, for me, I actually found the best way to get used to pistol is to play Warzone, um, especially Warzone Assault, because uh, at the beginning, like everyone's using their pistols, and there's a lot of people running around, and people just running around everywhere, and, and you're pretty much constantly just shooting a pistol, shooting a pistol. And for me, that like that's what got my be my pistol like to get better. Um, and it's a really good weapon for long like long range, and it's got quite a nice like it, it still has lock on and aim assist from like quite a long range. I'd say like up until. W you know, if they're like on that nest area, that sniper area there, it'll still lock on. So it's quite a long range weapon. You can also use it at a medium range uh, and even close range. But for me, I think a close range is when you want to use this weapon, the air. Um, it's a really, really strong automatic weapon. It kills them pretty damn fast. Uh, again, you can you can shoot them and make them one shot with the air and then finish off with the headshot. Um, that's pretty helpful. Or you can just keep airing them. It kills them pretty fast, as you see. It's a pretty, pretty damn strong weapon up close. Uh, so when, you, when you're in up close situations or if someone's weak, like say, you know, uh, if, I, if this guy's like a one shot, um, instead of trying to like shoot him with the pistol from awkward angles or if he's like jumping around and stuff, you just go about to air up close and just finish him off. Um, it, 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 it pretty much, it, it kills shields and hulks like the same like uh, pace. Uh, as you can see when his shields pop, like it'll still kill him quite fast even when he just has hulk. So it's a really, really good weapon. Um, but yeah, like I said, keep it for the close range when the, the, the pistol is just a bit too awkward to use. Um, that's when I use it like all the time. Um, then moving on to the weapons around the map. So on Halo, uh, besides your starting weapons, there's always weapons lying around the map. Um, okay, starting off with the SMG. This is a really, really powerful weapon, like up close. It's, it's pretty much, I'd say, like the same as the air, but just more powerful. Like, it melts even faster. I think is there an arrow lying over here that I can demonstrate with? No, okay. Um, but yeah, it, it pretty much melts them even faster than the air. You, and, and, and it has much more ammo, so it'll last for longer. Um, so that is a pretty damn powerful weapon. Same thing goes for the Storm Rifle. The Storm Rifle, also very... Okay, it's probably one of the most powerful weapons in the game. Um, but also automatic up close. It really melts their shields. Like, if you look at that, you make them one shot almost instantly. And then you can even move out your pistol to finish them off. Or you can just keep shooting at them. Still kills them pretty fast. 
percent in terms of health, like you like there. So it's it's really really good uh, at at very up close. Um, and then let me just demonstrate. Also, uh, one thing to note is that your magnum and your uh, any any one-handed weapon, so the magnum, bolt shot, and um, plasma pistol, but but mainly the magnum is for this example. Uh, those ones equip much faster than any other weapon. So see, when I switch my weapon to a pistol, it um it goes much quicker. Whereas it would with say like the lyre rifle. If I change my weapon, it takes a longer time to prove up a lyre rifle. Whereas if I'm whipping out my pistol, it's like almost instant. A good thing to do if I use it on if I use this on assassin now, I can make him one shot with my pistol and he's dead like that. It's like instant. Um, so that's how you, that's how you use um uh, the assault rifle, or you can just use it to finish them off. Like th that that pistol example is just if they're up close, but if if uh, sorry if if you're like a little bit further away, but if you're up close, you can pretty much just finish them off with a assault rifle like that. Um, the lyre rifle also super super powerful weapon. Um, you can you can use it when you when you don't zoom in just like this, shoot them like that one two three, it'll make them one shot, and then the fourth when they hit will obviously kill them. Um, so it's a four shot weapon, also quite powerful, but then uh, even better is if you zoom in with it and you shoot it twice. Uh, it shoots slower, but it's much more powerful. So two bullets like that will make someone one shot. So that's really, really good. I mean, if I uh, demonstrate, if one of my dummies can just go stand like back down there uh, in the yard, uh, from very far away, like even from a, a range, you can just shoot them twice and they're one shot. Like that is, that is freaking ridiculously OP. It's almost like a sniper. Um, so that's the best way to use a light rifle. Um, for weapons on this map, the only other power weapon I can think of is... Oh wait, I haven't gone through the plasma pistol yet, let me show you guys that one. Um, plasma pistol, you, you just want to charge this one up to make someone one shot. So you want to charge it up like that, and one, once it's like this, you can just hold it down. So you don't have to let go straight away, you can hold down for as long as you want, uh, unless you change your weapon, that'll undo it, or if you clamber, that'll undo it. But you just uh, charge it up and keep it like this, and then release it on someone, and that'll make them one shot. And then you can whip them out. Again, you can use that pistol tip that I taught you. Uh, this is actually called a noob combo when you do this. You do that, and you quickly whip with the pistol and finish them off. Noob combo, really quick kill. Uh, that's a reference to Hitter 2 because people used to use it on there. Um, they used to use the pistol plasma pistol all the time, and then when they whip out the BR, everyone used to call it the noob combo. Uh, so, yeah, just a quick little trivia there for you. Um, that's pretty much it for weapons on the snap. The only other thing I can show you is a sniper. Uh, but that's like, it's pretty self-explanatory, uh, not much to know, um, you know, obviously stay a long range with the sniper, uh, it, it, it just takes a lot of practice to get with good with the sniper, but uh, some things to know is uh, if I can use them on a dummy here, um, if you shoot them in the body, it'll make them one shot, uh, so again you can use a pistol tip, shoot them in the body and then we'll, we'll fight your pistol, or just shoot them twice in the body, like so, do that, do that, and it'll kill them, but if you shoot them in their head, and this is where practice comes in a lot, if uh, my dummy can stand still over there, if you shoot them in the head, um, it's a one-shot kill. So that's that's like the main use for the sniper. It's a very very powerful weapon, um, and that's that, that, that's uh, pretty much it for weapons in this map. Okay, and then last thing in this map um, is you just go through the overshield. Uh, this thing that spawns here, the green plus thing. <laughs> uh, the overshield just gives you uh, like another shield. Is whenever you pick it up, it'll take two minutes to spawn. So what people generally do, the best way to time it is uh, if you look at the timer on your bottom right, so say for example I'm going to pick up overshield at uh, let's say 44.15 right now uh, I know that at 42.15 it'll be coming up again so when you're whenever you're in game tell your teammates when you picked it up so say I picked it up I'll say 44.15 and then I'll say okay guys so overshield's going to be coming up at uh, 42.15 and then tell it to your teammates and then you guys all know that when it's going to exactly be coming up and then you can all play around it and time it uh, for next time when it comes up so that's super super important to know Cool, so we're on a different map now, so I can show you guys some of the other weapons, um, and just give you like a little bit of different scenery. Um, one thing that I should also mention, uh, just with the sprint mechanics of this game, is um, one thing that you have to learn like from day one, is that uh, if you're weak, so Silent Assassin, if you can shoot me like twice now, yeah, if you're weak, uh, your, your shields won't regenerate until you stop sprinting. So as you can see at the top of my screen now, is like a bright um, yellow thing above my shields and when I stop sprinting it'll start going down and that's when my, my shields will heal but if I carry on sprinting now it goes back fully so if I stop once you see it when it goes to the bottom there you go I'll start healing my shields so that's how the mechanics of sprint work so just bear in mind that if you're weak try not to sprint so you can get your shields back sometimes it is necessary if you're weak like and, and that you know that if you don't sprint you're gonna die so say like you know I'm one shot over here and the enemy is like over there 
uh, and I'm one shot. I know that if I can maybe quickly sprint over there, uh, I can stay alive. Uh, so that's that's when it'll be worth it. You know, obviously, if you d if you just stood here and you didn't sprint and you try to run like this, it's too super slow, so you'll die. So there's there is some times that you actually don't want to um, you don't want to sprint to stay alive. Um, I mean, sorry, that you do want to sprint to stay alive. Uh, okay, so as for the rest of the weapons on, on this uh, game, uh, so let's start with the brute plasma uh, rifle. Uh, it's not on many maps and most people think it's a pretty dumb weapon, which I agree with. Uh, it's pretty much, I'd say it's most similar to the Storm Rifle, but it actually gets rid of shields even quicker than the Storm Rifle, so like that, it'll make the first a one-shot, and then you can use my pistol trick that I was talking about to finish them off. Um, but it's not very good against uh, Hulk, so if I let the Silent Assassin uh, heal up now, if I shoot him with shield, it'll make him one-shot, but then if I shoot his Hulk, it doesn't do too much. So it's not a good idea to try to finish them off with the, with the Brute Rifle, uh, rather make them one shot and then finish them off with your, your pistol or whatever. Um, so that's how that weapon works. Uh, let's move on to the BR that spawns down here on this map. Um, this gun, one of my favorite. Uh, it's it's similar to similar to the pistol, but more powerful. Um, and also it takes sh four shots to kill them, so you know you can shoot them one, two, three times in the body, and then if I shoot them in the head with all three bullets, it will finish them off. Um, they are very nice weapon, four bullets, also quite long range. I'd say it's, it's kind of just like an upgrade to the pistol. Uh, and then let me quickly walk over here and grab the DMR. Uh, also very similar to the pistol. It's, it's also a five shot kill, so exact same as the pistol, one, two, three, four. Um, and then finish them off for the headshot. If I'm not mistaken, it shoots a tiny bit quicker than the pistol, so it's definitely worth pick picking up. And then the biggest uh, perk of this weapon is it's very, very long range. So on this map, it's very nice if you're sitting on your bridge and say there's another person sitting on the other bridge or sitting down there uh, you can put one, two, three, four shots at them and they're already one shot so it's very powerful from long range um, and then last weapon or one of the last lower, uh, lower class weapons in this map that I can show you guys is a carbine also very very similar um, precision weapon you know like a pistol yeah it's actually pretty nice at close range I'm not gonna lie uh, if you're in a close range battle you can melt them pretty fast I think quicker than the DMR um, but at long range, it's not too shabby. It has quite a bit of recoil, as you can see. Uh, so it's not too good, but it's definitely worth picking up. Um, and then the biggest one that I want to talk about is rockets. Um, one thing for people to note is uh, rockets spawn every two minutes uh, after you pick them up. But yeah, like I said, for all these weapons that have a, a waypoint above them, um, they'll spawn like like th they'll they'll get a marker saying 30 seconds until they spawn in. Uh, so that's pretty damn awful. So once once you know that they're going to spawn in 30 seconds, you have more than enough time to get your team over there and get everyone ready to try and get it. Um, now, my, my biggest tip with the rockets, uh, a lot of people struggle using it. It's definitely like, arguably the most powerful weapon in this game. Um, but I, I have a pretty good tip to help people that are struggling with it. Instead, you want to rather walk around looking at where you would shoot if someone comes around the corner, right? So say like uh, assassin if, if you can sit on the bridge right there say i i know there's a guy on the bridge okay and i'm coming around with rockets y you should rather aim like see like at the floor like this when you're coming around the corner or if i come around here i'm going to be looking at that floor over there sh looking where i'm going to shoot my rocket uh if i'm coming around uh, uh, this uh like on this edge over here i'm going to be looking at this wall you know looking at the wall looking at the wall so if there's someone right next to it i can shoot it you know looking at the wall then look into this platform when I come down, when I jump over here, I'm going to be looking onto this ground over there. You always want to be looking at the ground when you have the rockets. Uh, that's probably the best tip I can give. Alright, and then last thing on this map, uh, I almost forgot uh, one of my dummies reminded me, thanks to him, uh, is the scatter shot. Um, this map, I mean, sorry, this gun is pretty much like a shotgun. Um, I I'd say it's pretty much just as powerful. Um, but one thing you want to know about this gun, uh, let's see, like, you can, you know, you can kill them from pretty, uh, pretty close. Um, and it shoots pretty fast. Um, but yeah, one thing to know about this weapon is if you zoom in, uh, it's even more like uh, precise. So if you are at a little bit of a distance, be sure to zoom in and you'll get that kill. That's pretty much all there is to know about the scatter shot. Um, other than that, similar mechanics to the shotgun. Okay, so again, we're on a new map just to show off the last couple weapons. And also, I'm going to give you guys uh, the tips on how to use the grenades um, and some tips on those. Uh, so let's start off with the rail. This gun is honestly just freaking OP. Um, especially on this map. Basically how you use it is you just charge it up and then it shoots. But uh, one thing to note that a couple of new players don't know is that if you look at my reticle, um, you can see that the semicircle is like kind of wide. If you charge it up, at a point it, it becomes it, like those those uh, three like little lines like that. 
and that's when you can actually shoot the weapon. So a lot of people think that you have to hold it all the way. So you have to hold it, hold it, hold it, and then eventually it shoots. Uh, you actually don't have to. You can hold it just till that point where, where you see the three lines uh, charge up, and then you can shoot it. So you can shoot it, there you go, instead of having to wait uh, that bit longer to shoot it. Uh, and then another thing that I like to use is uh, y you can walk around with this gun, like charging it up, like so, that. So like, so you know, as soon as you see someone, you're already halfway charged up. And then another thing is, if you if you do charge it up fully, and then say like, say I charge it up fully, and then my enemy goes like around the wall, so that you know I don't want to shoot it because I'm obviously gonna miss. Uh, the best way to like cancel your shot is to charge it up and then just press Y Y. So uh, charge it up and then Y Y, and you'll switch weapons. If if you try release your finger from the trigger, uh, it usually actually stays on that little bit longer for it to shoot. So rather just Y Y. So as, as you're about to shoot, just Y Y and change it. Um, and and ni a nice thing also why why um, with this gun is uh, once you shoot it, I can reload and then there I can press why why and then it's ready instead of having to do the full reload. Um, yeah, that's it for um, that's it for railgun. Then uh, another thing I want to go through is the camo on, on this map. Uh, there's on a few maps as well, but uh, just the mechanics of camo. Um, so camo. It works the same way with overshield in the way that when you pick it up, it it takes two minutes to spawn. So that's super important to know. So you know that once you pick it up, um, two exactly two minutes later on your timer, it'll be coming up again. Um, but some tips with camo is when you pick it up. Um, okay, so obviously you're invisible, but if you if you move around quickly, uh, your invisibility wears off like that, and then yeah, and then once you're still again, it'll. Um, you'll go back invisible. So what people want to do, what people do with camo, what you should do is just walk around normally, don't sprint or don't thrust or don't stabilize. See if I, if I thrust, I'll, I'll, I'll won't be invisible. If I stabilize, I won't be invisible. So just walk normally. And then uh, another big tip is if you throw grenades when you have camo, uh, your camo doesn't uh, go away. So you can throw grenades as much as you want and uh, your camo will stay on. Whereas if you shoot, uh, your camo will also go away. So that's some important thing to know. Um, also, if you crouch, you go even more invisible. As you can see now, it'll show a little bit of my camo, but if I crouch, my camo uh, is there completely. Uh, so yeah. Then uh, one thing I want to move on to is grenades. Um, so you start off with two frag grenades when you start the game. Uh, my, I, I just set the settings on to have all grenades so I can show you guys. But uh, in every game type, you'll start off with two grenades, uh, two frag grenades. Um, so frag grenades are these, you know, standard bouncy ones that bounce around. Um, the, me the mechanics of, of this grenade is that if you throw it, okay, if you throw the grenade off like the ground, it has to be the ground or like or like you know a flat horizontal platform. If you throw it off there, it after after it bounces, it takes like a second to explode. So see if I bounce it off there, after a second it'll explode. Um, whereas if I throw it off a, a, a vertical wall like that, the timer won't come on until it hits the, the ground. So see if I throw it against the wall. It'll bounce around, bounce around, bounce around, and once it hits the ground, then it'll take a second to stop like that. Um, th and th this grenade, it, it can't kill anyone, so the best you can do with this grenade is throw it at their feet and try to get as close as you can to them and make them one shot. Um, so yeah, again, because these grenades are bouncy, they're the best to use to like, you know, throw into areas where the enemies are hiding. You know, if they're in the base over there, you know, throw them like that. Um, use them to throw around corners, so if someone's hiding behind them there, you know, I can throw a grenade right there. It'll hit them. Um, that's the best way to use frag grenades. Uh, then you get stickies, this covenant uh, grenade. Uh, stickies, th they they won't explode. Uh, similar to grenades, uh, they won't explode until they hit the ground, but th th they don't bounce around like grenades. So see if I throw it against the wall, it's just gonna plop down and then land there and explode. Uh, but what's nice about stickies is it can kill someone if it's lying under their feet. It can kill them uh, without. Okay, <laughs> nice chance. It'll kill them with uh with, with like one explosion. It, it will make them one shot or it'll kill them fully. And then what's even uh, nicer about that is it's called a sticky grenade. And what does that mean? <laughs> it can stick on people. So if I throw it against the uh, assassin's uh, face, it'll stick to him and it'll kill him. So that's <laughs> if you like that's, that's one of the fan favorite grenades. It's fun. Um, and then you get the the pulse grenade or, or actually no, it's called the spinner grenade in Halo 5. Um, otherwise known as the tangerine, otherwise known as the grenade that everyone hates in this game. So the basic concept of uh, spinner grenades is. It's basically used it to like block off a doorway. So say there's somebody in there and, and, and then you don't want them to push you, you can throw it right there, and then it'll like pop like that for a while. It it, it stays there for a couple seconds, and then obviously if you walk through it, you get damage like that. Um, and then secondly, uh, I I dread giving this this tip because I hate it when people do it. But uh, the second like most important way to use a spinner grenade is trying to make it just uh, go here and use it. 
second best way to use it, um, you know, people hate it when, when you do this, but it's just really good. Like, if you're about to die and someone's in your face, or if someone's right up close to you, you can literally just throw it right at them, and it'll just decimate them like that. Uh, it usually kills them, or it gets them really weak, and uh, that's like kind of the newbie way to use it, but it's also super, super effective. Spartan abilities in this game. Um, so, the first one is the Spartan Charge. Um, it's pretty damn OP, and basically it's just a way of, of sprint into a melee straight away. You know, obviously if you're sprinting, it's hard to just like stop and then beat down. Uh, so what they put into the game is spot and charge. So while you're sprinting, and then once you're going at full pace, uh, you'll know you, you'll know you'll be able to spot and charge when you see on like the sides of my screen. Uh, as soon as I get to full pace, you'll see like some white lines like pop up, um, and I think it makes a noise. So it's right there. You'll see those white lines pop up, and then that's when I'm going at full speed. So there. Oh yeah, and it also makes a bit of a noise. It goes like choo. You'll hear it. Um, so you sprint. And then Spartan Charge, you just press melee and your guy will Spartan Charge. Uh, you can lock on with the Spartan Charge, so say like I'm sprinting. And w once someone's in your reticle, uh, it'll it'll go red. And that's when you know you can Spartan Charge them. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it has the same damage as a melee. So it'll make them one shot in the front and then it'll kill them if you beat them down in the back. Um, so that's the Spartan Charge. And secondly, you get the Ground Pound. Uh, for this one, it works if you're jumping and then you hold down your melee button. Uh, you'll do a spot and charge like that. And when it charges up, uh, once, it is that, once it is that point where it lights up and it makes that noise, and uh, like once that circle completes right there, uh, that's when you can spot and charge. So you don't, have to w you don't have to wait all the way until then. You can just let go as soon as the spot and charge is ready. There. Um, so yeah, it takes, takes some getting used to, takes some practice, but uh, that's, that's something that you need to know. And then what's pretty cool, um, definitely a big tip worth uh, t telling you guys, and it's like, it's super, super helpful, and th this is a perfect situation. Um, say I'm like really weak, say I'm like shooting someone over there, and I'm really weak, and I back up behind this, this wall, right? And I don't want to get hit by nades, or I don't want to get pushed. What you can do is you can use a combination of, um, of Spartan abilities, uh, which are, okay, thrust, stabilize, and then ground pound, and then thrust again. So, basically how this works is, um, if you look at my thrust, when you thrust, you'll see that, you'll see that it has a bit of a, a cooldown. Um, if you look at the top right of the screen, when I thrust, you see that red little exclamation mark? That means my thrust isn't available, and then it comes back and it makes a little noise as well, so that's how you know when it's back. It takes like two, like two maybe three seconds to come back. Uh, there, it's back. Um, so basically, what you can do, uh, so if I thrust off the map, stabilize, then ground pound, then in that time, uh, my thrust will come back, and then I can thrust back to someone like that. Um, so basically, in the time that you're um, stabilizing, and in the time that you're ground pounding, in that time, your thrust will be able to replenish. Uh, so that's a really nice way to stay alive. You, you can like do a lot of nerdy things where you literally like jump off the map from a thrust, um, and then stay alive by doing that. So yeah, that's pretty nice to know. Um, and yeah, that is pretty much it for the tips that I have, uh, the basic tips in the NF5. If you guys um, want some more tips or uh, you know want me to help you out, feel free to message me, Vinko Pupski, as you can see there on the screen. Uh, message me, or I'm sure many of, many of the local Halo players have my number or whatever. Um, just message me, I, I can give you guys some tips um, to help you out. And yeah, other than that, uh, go back to the beginning of the video to to learn like the basics of what you can do from now to learn like I was saying you know free fall playing with friends playing with players that are better than you team arena spot stuff like that um, and even some warzone just get used to the game uh, practice your jumps practice all these things that I've taught you in the video um, and yeah thanks guys thanks for watching